So I have created a Google spreadsheet and what this will allow my students to do is basically automatically create a graph when they type in their particular data. And so this is for a walking functions activity and you can see that there's a data table here and students are going to fill in their data that they collect while doing this activity. And over here on the right there's this box that says no data. This is going to be where the graph automatically is generated when they start typing in their data. So if I just type in the different data that they might have from these different things, I'm just putting in random numbers, um, you'll see that it will automatically create this graph for them. And so I might use an automatic graph or an auto graph when I haven't taught my students how to graph yet, but I am teaching them how to analyze graphs and interpret data. I might give this to my students, I might set something up like this if it's a complicated graph to create in Google Sheets and I don't want to spend the time to teach them how to do a really complicated graph. Or it could just be that where we are in the unit, I don't need them to worry about creating a graph, I just want them to understand the concepts and so I just kind of want to go through that part quickly and have them just automatically have the graph so they can get to work with the analysis and their interpretations of that data. So I'm going to show you how I set this up. Um, down here below you'll see that there's questions that they're going to answer so there's kind of everything in one spot but I'm just going to show you some basics of how to set this up. So I have a blank spreadsheet right here and I'm just going to go ahead and type in what would be in the data table. I like to put a title up at the top and then here was um, I think time and distance and you can put in your um, different units of measurement so like meters, time and seconds, um, whatever you want it to say. Then um, I like to have the blank spaces for the students to put their information in. So I'm going to just highlight the cells if I want them to like collect five pieces of data or however many and then put borders around it. Some little tricks to just kind of organize it for me. I like to have the data table so they know that it's a data table. I like to merge the cells so I highlight both cells. Click on the merge cells and then center it bold it, etc. I probably will have these outlined too. Notice that it's running over the edge. So if I click on A and B, I can make them a little bigger. And if I, a lot of times I'll color code things so students have to put things in a particular spot. This just makes it a little easier so they know what to fill in and what not to fill in. And to create the automatic graph, I have to have data first so I know that I'm doing it correctly because I don't want it to just be that blank because I don't want it to just be that blank graph that we saw here where it said no data because if I saw that I can't really make the graph and make sure it looks okay. So I'm going to fill in with some data first and it's just some fake data. Um, you can run the lab yourself if you want to but I'm just going to put in some random numbers before I create my graph. Now I'm going to highlight the graph including the labels of the um, two sets of data, the two columns here. So I highlight that and I can click over here where it says insert chart on this icon or I can go up to the top and insert chart. Now it gives me this particular chart and I can go in and do some customization. I can change whether it's a scatter chart or if it is a line graph, whatever it might be. Um, you can, it says to use row two as headers and that's the times and distance and so it labeled my axes for me. If I need to edit the axes, I can click on it and just click and edit whatever text I want it to say. And then I can change colors of things, I can change the title, there's lots of different things I can change. So um, I could go to the chart title, subtitle, etc. 
um, the chart style is where I can maybe change the color. If I want the background color a certain way, if I want the border color, there's lots of weird things you could do to really customize it. Um, I probably wouldn't use most of them for something basic like this. But then in the series, I can put, um, if I want to have a point at each, like each data point to have a point, you can change the shape of it. You can have, um, whether it's a solid line or dashed line, you can change the axes, thickness. So there's lots of um, different controls that you have. You can add error bars, a trend line, data labels. Data labels would like put the number, the value in this case, um, but you could have none. There's, you could change the font, lots of cool things. Legend, um, if you wanted to have a key, in this case, I don't have a need because I didn't have like two sets of distances or something. I didn't have a another um, column or variable in my data table. And then you can change the horizontal and the vertical axis. You could do a log scale. Um, same on vertical and then grid lines and ticks. How how many um, major minor grid lines you want that sort of thing. So you can, there's a bunch of stuff you can choose, the positions, lots of crazy things. So once you have it how you want, and again, you could edit everything, you're just going to leave it as is. You can move it around. If you want it on a different spot on your thing, you can change the size of it. So you have lots of control. Then when you're ready to give it to the students, what you're going to do is delete your data. When you delete your data, the graph is still there, but there's no data in it. So then when the students start typing in things, the graph will appear for them. So again, you want to have it clear for the students, and then you're going to share it with the students. And so when you share it, you're going to get the link. Anyone with the link can view. You're going to copy that link. Once I have this link, I'm not going to share it directly with my students because then they have to get a file and then make a copy. And sometimes that's a little much for students. I want to make it as simple as possible. So what I like to do if I'm not sharing it through my learning management system or like Google Classroom where it makes a copy for everyone, what I'll do is edit the URL. And so I go to the very end and I look for the last forward slash. So this here, I'm going to make it red just so you can see it. So I look for that last forward slash. And then I delete everything after it. So the edit question mark USP equals sharing. Sometimes it's different depending on where you copy the link from. But I'm going to delete that. Now what I like to do is put template slash preview. So I've added this part here, which I'm going to make green. Okay, this is the link that I'm going to share with my students. And when they type that in to the address bar or they click on it, what it does for them is it gives them a preview of the spreadsheet and they all they have to do is click use template and it's going to make a copy for them that they can edit. It's in their drive. It, it's their own document now. They own this. It's separate from mine. Okay, so here was mine. This one is the students. And so the student's just going to go and type in the data. And they get their graph. If they want to then put this data table and graph into a lab report that they're doing, there's different ways that you can have them do that. But a lot of times I will have them just copy and paste this into their document that they're working on. So I'm just going to press control V. If I link it to the spreadsheet, I normally tell my students to do that because maybe they like had a typo on their doc. So um, they could fix it on the spreadsheet and then it will automatically allow them to update without having to copy and paste again. So here is the data table and then they can share the graph. So if they click on the graph, they get to the three dots. 
copy chart. I go over to my spreadsheet or lab report, link to the spreadsheet and paste. And then they could have this here. Now, sometimes the students will on their um, spreadsheet, maybe they have the wrong labels. Maybe they didn't do it in meters. Maybe they measured in feet. So they can go over here and they can change the information and say feet. And I'll do the same over here. So maybe, I don't know, hopefully my students don't do things in feet. But now when I go back to here, you'll see that it says update for both of them because I chose to link them. So if I click on update, it now says feet. If I click over here, it now says feet. So uh, that's why I like to have students link things because if they do need to make changes, they can. And then it's really easy for them to update where they pasted that information to. So you can get really crazy when creating your graphs for your students. Um, like you can see I did here with a place for them to answer their questions. Um, this document also has different information for like the whole class. So each class um, team has their own place to click on. There's an instruction page as the first tab that has instructions for them and direct links. Like if I click here to team eight first walker, it goes to that particular tab for them. So it's easier for them to navigate than having to like look around down at the bottom. So there's different tricks with spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are a lot of fun. If you um, start playing with them, you'll find them really useful in your classrooms.